How's it going, everybody? Welcome to uh, my dungeon, aka my basement. Today, I wanted to do a little video on my Anycubic Viper. It is, or was, my first 3D printer. I've had it for a few years now. Um, I've been really happy with it, actually. Um, my first year of ownership, it kind of checked all the boxes for me. The printer itself was super easy to assemble. It had really user-friendly features like automatic bed leveling. I mean, really, that's that sold it on me. It was the you need the automatic bed leveling and the fact that it was very like four or five bolts to install, like put the thing together in the box. It's like thirty minutes to get it out of the box and printing. I kind of got into three D printing. It was one of those things where it's like I think I could be interested in this, but. I want to know if I'm interested in 3D printing, and I don't want to spend a lot of time messing with the 3D printer. Um, at least that's kind of what I thought. So I am not knocking the Viper. I just wanted to do a video, just kind of how some changes I've made to the machine to make it more of like a relevant printer uh, when compared to modern printers today. And like I said, getting started with the Viper, my first year of ownership was pretty painless um didn't have too many issues part of that could have been the fact that i was new to 3d printing so i didn't know kind of that i was having some print issues like over or under extrusion like just barely so that my tolerance were my tolerance on things were always off just a little bit but most of the stuff i was printing like if you're printing a benchy or something like that which is what i was doing when i started um, you're not really going to know, notice those kinds of things. It's not until you get into like some functional prints where you're, you've got different parts that you want to work together with something that wasn't printed that I realized that I was having. I needed to do some tuning and type of stuff like that. So once I really wanted to kind of start fine tuning my Viper, um, that's when I realized that there was the community firmware. And that really opened up a whole new world to me. Uh, right around the time I discovered the community firmware is when I got my SVO6 Plus. And that basically gave me the freedom to kind of do whatever I wanted with my Viper because I wouldn't be without a printer. Because, you know, you have to be able to print something whenever you want, right? <laughs> uh, first world problems, you know? I did the mod for the uh, community firmware, and that was great. It, you know, gave me linear advance. It gave me, you know, faster printing times. It gave me PID tuning just at the touch of a button. I was able to, ex you know, do E-steps and stuff like that. Great. And it was about that time that I noticed that I was having some issues with the stock shroud. So I upgraded to the 5015 fans, the Hero Me mod. And shortly after that, I decided to do the Micro Swiss extruder. And then shortly after that, I did the Capricorn Bowden tubes with the Micro Swiss extruder. And then I went to the direct drive and got a low profile stepper motor. And the last mod that I did, um, was I upgraded to a new V-Stick style nozzle. Um, I went with this, it's like a Red Lizard A1. Yeah, cats are doing some stuff down there. Uh, so here it is. I'm, I'm sure it's like a cheap clone of something. Or maybe it's, you know, unique and not a ripoff. I don't know. I got it from Amazon. Yes, I have two of them. I ordered one. I almost dropped it on the floor. I ordered one, and then it didn't show up for a week, and then I didn't know if I was going to get it, and I got impatient. I ordered another one, and then they both showed up, and I was too lazy to return it. So, yeah. So anyways, I did all those upgrades, and the thing prints beautifully. I really was happy with it. And, I and then uh, this little guy came into my life. This is the... Fitech um, portable input shaper or the piss board and I you know used it on my SVO6 plus and saw what a difference input shaping made on my prints 
and how easy it was. I mean, setting this up took a day because I'm functionally I'm slow. But once I got it figured out how to work it, like I was amazed at the difference in the print quality. And naturally, I wanted that from the Viper. I wanted that, and then I also was like, I've got this hot end that's rated for like 500 degrees, and I, you know, don't have a Bowden tube anymore. Like I've got an all metal hot end. Like I should be able to print high temp filaments and abrasive filaments. So I decided to go with Clipper. And when I did the migration to Clipper on the Viper, I also did the migration to Orca Slicer. And you know, that's what I'm in right now. That's where this view is coming from. This is the device tab and Orca Slicer. But I've been like really happy with how easy all of this stuff was. Um, the installation Clipper onto the Viper was a ridiculously easy process. I used the Clipper install and update helper. Um, I used an install of Debian OS on a C720 Chromebook. That was great. The next hurdle I had, which I, I felt really confident because um, I clipperized my SVO6 Plus like 15 minutes into ownership. But <clears throat> I hit some big issues with the clipper config file. The SVO6 Plus, I used Fasiminator. I used a GitHub builds that he did for the SVO6 Plus, and it had like all of the macros, all of the bed screws, like everything you could want on your Clipper machine, it was already installed. And when I got my Clipper installation done on the Viper, doing the fresh install, there, there was nothing. So I had to learn how to do macros and stuff like that. That was relatively simple i was able to look at the printer config for my svo6 plus and compare it to the viper relatively easy there's a, a lot of really good videos on youtube about the clipper printer config one thing that i think is really unique about the viper itself where you might have issues is this area right here the bed mesh and the probe settings it took me a really long time to figure out what was going on. One thing that I did different, which is probably my fault, was I installed CAMP, which is Adapt Clipper Adap Adaptive Mesh and Purging. Basically what it does is it takes the, the thing you want to print, and before the print, it does a bed mesh of the area, just the area. So you have like this really small mesh to work with. So if you're doing small stuff, it doesn't add too much time to the print, but it just was supposed to give me this peace of mind of like, all right, the print's gonna work, it's gonna be great. What I was failing to realize was my start G code. I was warming the nozzle up to temperature before doing that bed mesh. So even though my like, nozzle oozing i'm not stringing but there would still be a little bit of filament ready for that purge line and the way that the the strain gauge by you know probing works it presses down on the bed and then it goes to another point presses down on the bed if there was any filament on the nozzle it was causing my my mesh to be all crazy because it was how minuscule it was it was still registering a difference there so i had to play with my start g codes to basically get the bed warmed up to temperature i wanted the nozzle to be warm but not to where it was going to cause filament ooze another thing that i really struggled with now that you can see it was <clears throat> figuring out the printer from big but the the bed mesh and the probe area out of the box, it was just doing one probe for each spot, and it was like really slow. It would take like 20 minutes to just do a bed mesh. So I did speed up the bed mesh here. I, you know, going from place to place, I put it at 120. So it goes relatively quickly. Um, I did lower the Z offset. So I had already done the Z offset for the machine, and then I just did it, you know, 
figured out where the nozzle would be able to comfortably move, but not have to travel really far to tap the bed. And then I changed, you know, the speed was at 0.5, I changed it to 1.5. I don't know if that makes a huge difference on the accuracy, but I did change it from one sample to three samples. And that's what these lines right here are all about. So the median result, it'll do the three samples and then do the average of it. Probably should lower the retract distance there because my retract is like 0.5, not two. But I'm not gonna mess with it right now because it is working. Those are some of the things that I really gave me issues at the beginning. Uh, getting the start decode, and then just learning how to navigate Prusa, or not Prusa Slicer, Orca Slicer. Um, I'd gone from, I started with Cura, I went to Prusa, and then this being able to switch back and forth is really easy. I, I just, I think that, you know, the Viper is still a, a viable printer, even though it's, it's a little dated. Um, you can do some upgrades. They're not, like, none of these upgrades were expensive, per se. The, the, the hot end and, I guess, the Micro Swiss Extruder, those were relatively expensive. They were both, like, 50 bucks. Um, but everything else was, was cheap. Just time. Hello, everybody. It is editing Dom here. Um, I am going through the video, and I realized I didn't really go through the benefits of Clipper. So the, the biggest benefit is going to be speed and more control over your printer. So um, I will be able to just go in the printer config and up the max temp of my hot end so that I can do those high temperature filaments that I want to print. And um, the, speed in, whoop, the speed in general is just... A lot faster. This is the uh, little desk drawer under the desk drawer that I was printing yesterday. I printed two of them. They came out fantastic. And this is not the first time I've done this print. The, the first one I did was the hexagon pattern here, which, you know, used a lot less filament. And that took me about nine hours. This took four hours. So you're almost cutting it like in half which is amazing. And the print quality, I think, is much better than my other drawers. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, once I get input shaping configured on there and I do the speed, I'll have, you know, the nice detail with the better speed. So, figuring out the bed leveling, figuring out the clipper config, definitely worth it. The second thing I wanted to address is when I installed this stuff onto Clipper, I used an old laptop, a Chromebook Acer C720. Um, if you go that route, make sure you use a Debian install, at least at the time of me making this video. The like Debian, well, I, I shouldn't say all of them. I used an Ubuntu variant, and I guess there's something broken in the Ubuntu you know, fork of Debian, uh, where when you're doing the install and you are in the installer doing the device by ID list or whatever, it doesn't work. Um, I tried fixing it for like 20 minutes, couldn't get it to work. So I installed Debian and it worked the first time. So that might be a hurdle some of you might get because you always, not always, but the, the Ubuntu flavors are pretty popular. Um, I don't know if that goes for Linux Mint or anything like that, but that's just, you know, kind of be warned if you're hitting that roadblock, that's kind of a way to fix it. Um, anyways, yeah. So if you've got any questions or anything, um, or if you'd like to see more about my setup here, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them and I'll see you guys later. Bye.